Hey everyone, welcome to Cricut Time. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for more project ideas and tutorials. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks that you can use on your next iron-on project, and I'll also go over a few things to remember when using your Easy Press. If you haven't done an iron-on project before, there are two different sides to your iron-on material. One side is really shiny because it has a carrier sheet on top of it. Once we cut out our design from the bottom, this sheet is what's going to stop your iron-on material from sticking to your heat press. We do not cut our designs from this side, so what we have to do is flip it over, and we're going to do all of our cutting on the mat side. When you go to cut your project, you're going to want to stick the shiny side down to the mat. Your Cricut is going to cut through the iron-on material, but it's not going to cut through the carrier sheet. So what this means is instead of cutting from the top like normal, when you're doing an iron-on, you need to cut from the bottom. A super important step then is when you're in the mat view, click on mirror. If you have more than one mat, then you need to go through and just click on each one individually so that when you go to stick on your design, your writing and your pictures are the right direction that you wanted. Once everything looks good, click back on mat one so that that's where your machine starts and you're ready to make it. When I'm weeding iron-on material, I actually like to use the hooked weeder. I like the little hook at the front because it's very easy to pick up small pieces, and you can pick this up with a weeding tool set. All right, now that the weeding is done, we're gonna prep our shirt. This step is super important to making sure that your iron-on sticks properly. The shirt that I'm using is a cotton polyester blend. So I have my heat press set to 315 degrees, and for the prepping stage, I'm going to keep it on my shirt for 15 seconds. Now that prepping is done, I can line up my design. If you haven't used one of these shirt guides before, I find them super helpful. Just line up the guide with the middle of your shirt and make sure that the tops are even on both sides. You can use the sleeves as well to make sure that your line is straight going side to side. When you're happy with its placement, grab your design. One thing I like to do is measure out where the middle of my design is going to be and then just make a little mark with a pencil. It's super easy to line up that mark with the center line of the guide. Once you have your first layer on, you're ready to add the heat. I have a Cricut mat underneath the shirt to protect my table, and I'm going to set my timer for 30 seconds using light pressure. It's important during this step to apply your heat press down straight and hold it still the whole time. If it moves side to side, it can leave your design looking a little bit bumpy. Once you're done the front, another tip is to flip it over and do the back of the shirt for an additional 15 seconds. This helps it adhere to the shirt a lot better. Once your design cools down, you can carefully peel back the carrier sheet. If you notice any lifting in your design, just put the carrier sheet back down and press it one more time, but this time add a little bit more pressure. If everything looks good, you can repeat these same steps for any additional layers you have in your project. Just remember to protect any layers that you've already added by putting that carrier sheet back on before you use your heat press again. And just like that, we are done. I absolutely love these little shirts and I hope that you can use these tips and tricks next time you're doing your own project using iron-on material. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and the like button for more project ideas and tutorials on all things Cricut.